All right, this is fourth grade, module six, lesson eight. And in this lesson, students are going to be understanding how these, or they're going to be taking that fraction equivalence that we know, like four tenths is equal to 40 hundredths and that kind of idea. And we're going to move that into the world of decimals. And we're also going to be connecting that with the place value chart. So let's get started. So let's start with 2.3. Now, what does 2.3 mean? So if we were going to shade in uh, 2.3, we would say, okay, well, here's one hole, and we've got to shade that in, and then I know I need another one of those, so I'm going to shade that in, and that's going to go right here. So now I have two holes, right? And then... But how are we going to do this point 0.3? Well, the idea is I'm going to take this last one and I'm going to cut it into 10 strips. So I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit and I'm going to cut that into 10 strips. So I'm going to begin by cutting it in half and then I'm going to cut each half into five pieces. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. And then so there are my tenths. So I'm going to zoom back out so we could see it. So there's my tenths. And I know that I need to shade in three of those. And so that's going to be one, two, and three. So there is my 2.3, right? So the idea is, let's start there. Now, if I wanted this entire thing in terms of tenths, well, I know I have three tenths, but how many tenths do I have right here? Well, I have ten tenths. I have ten tenths. Because, really, if you remember, I could cut this into ten strips. And three, four, five. And then I could cut this one into ten strips. Oops, I lost track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so there's another ten tenths. Plus, I have another three tenths. So what do I have to all together? I could think of this as twenty-three tenths, couldn't I? Now, if I wanted to, I could think about it in terms of hundredths as well, because I now I'm going to use red. And I'm going to zoom in. And if I wanted to think about this as hundredths, I would say, all right, well, let's cut this guy. Each tenth, I'll cut into ten pieces. So I'm going to create hundredths. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. So I just created hundredths here, and I'm going to do the same thing right here. So I'm going to cut it, first I'm going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to cut each half into five pieces. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to cut this into hundredths. So I'm going to start by cutting it in half, and then each half I'm going to cut in, into five pieces. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. And then so what I end up seeing is now if we're thinking about hundredths, I could think about that as a hundred hundredths plus another hundred hundredths plus now I have 30 hundredths, so that equals 230 hundredths, all right? So we can think about these connections that, let's see, 2.3, I can think of that as 2 and 3 tenths, and I can think of that as 23 tenths, or I could think of 2.3 as two and thirty hundredths, because really, if you think about it, all these little dot, uh, these what used to be three strips is now actually thirty little squares, 
And so I could think of this as 2 and 30 hundredths, which is equal to 230 hundredths. So we're making these connections, these equivalencies between the decimals, the fractions, and our, um, I guess, improper fraction. I, but I don't want to call it improper fraction. I'm just saying 23 tenths. Now, parents and teachers, why are we learning this? Well, eventually, students are going to be adding and subtracting, which means they're going to be carrying and borrowing, essentially, using old terminology. And so we want students to be able to do think about in terms of this, in, in terms of, oh, I'm, I need to carry or I need to borrow. So that's why it's going to be worth the effort to do this lesson and have our students really understand it. So here, using the area model, we're going to represent 220 hundredths. So what does that mean? Well, that means we're going to cut each of these into hundredths. There's hundredths. And then I'm going to do this one into hundredths. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And, and then I'm going to also do this one as well. So cut it in half, and then cut each half into five pieces. That gives me ten strips, so that now I have hundredths. So I have everything in hundredths. And if I wanted to shade in 220 hundredths, what would I be shading in? Well, I'm going to be shading in this entire hundred right here, so that's one hundred, plus I'm going to shade in another entire hundred, so that's two hundred total, and then uh, because I only want to shade in twenty more, that means I'm going to shade in two strips. Whoa, I'm going to shade in two strips, so that's going to be right here. So now, what did I just shade in total? How many tenths did I shade in? Well, I shaded in 10 tenths here, because now I'm talking about strips, going up and down, strips. And then I shaded in another 10 tenths over here, plus I shaded in 2 tenths here. So I shaded in 22 tenths, which is really 2 ones and 2 tenths, which is really 2.2. One hole, one hole, so there's 2 and 2 tenths. All right, so that's how we can think about using the area model to make our connections. Another way we could think about this is you could say, well, 220 hundredths is really, if we want to think about fractions, we could say, well, that's 100 hundredths plus another 100 hundredths plus 20 hundredths. And so that's the same thing as one hole plus one hole plus, and then we can say, well, we could say that's tw 20 hundredths, um, and that's equal to 2 and 20 hundredths. But we learned that you're allowed to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10 uh, in a previous lesson. So that's two holes, and you get two tenths. There's another way we could think about it for some of your students who just cannot stand what Eureka is showing them. We have, a, we have alternatives, and that's the whole point. In fact, that's what Eureka Math is saying, is we have so many alternatives. We have so many different ways to think about these numbers and share all of the different ways for our students so that they can grasp onto a couple of those methods and really understand the mathematics rather than just have it be a bunch of rules that they're memorizing. So using place value disks, we're going to represent two ones and three tenths. So what is that going to look like? Well, two ones and three tenths is going to look like two ones and three tenths. But if we want to convert this into nothing but plain old tenths, we know that this dot can be exchanged for ten tenths. So one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we know that this dot can be exchanged for 10 tenths. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these dots 
have been exchanged for tenths. So these whole numbers have been exchanged for tenths. So what do we end up with? We end up with 23 tenths. So another way to think of it, two ones and three tenths is equal to two and three tenths, which is equal to 23 tenths. <clears throat> Using the same idea, if we want to change these into hundredths, so we have three tenths and three hundredths, so three tenths, one, oh, oops, no, that's not where I want it, three tenths, one, two, three, and three hundredths, one, two, three, and then we know that each of these tenths is going to be converted into ten hundredths, so we're going to end up with, uh, right here, this becomes ten hundredths, this becomes ten hundredths, and this becomes ten hundredths, so we end up with thirty-three hundredths. So another way to say that is 0 0.33, so three tenths and three hundredths is equal to thirty-three hundredths. Now, what we're going to do is we're kind of removing the scaffolding and allowing our students to choose either the area model or the place value system, or, you know, the dots, the place value disks, the place, yeah, place value disks. Now, we're going to convert 1.3 into 3 tenths. So I know that one whole, 1.3, I know that one whole is 10 tenths, and I know that 0.3 is 3 tenths, so that becomes 13 tenths. That's one way to think of it. And I could say, well, 10.3, uh, another way to think of that, well, 10 is equal to 100 tenths, because each whole number is 10 tenths. So uh, 10 whole numbers is 100 tenths, plus we have three more tenths. So this could be 103 tenths, 103 tenths. That's one way to show it. Another way you could have shown it is use that place value disks. And these are your tenths. Here's your decimal. And then we have ones here and tens here. So what are we going to do? Well, we know that we have what says is 110. So that means we have 110 and we have 3 tenths way over here. So that's our place value disk. Now we know that if we cash this one dot in, this 110, we get 10 ones. So that becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then, so that guy's gone because he's been exchanged for 10 ones. And then we know that each of these ones can then be exchanged for tenths. So that we're going to, each one of these dots gets exchanged. So 10 times 10 is 100 plus the 3, there's our 103 tenths. So you got a variety of ways to explain this. More of the same concept, only now we're turning them into hundredths. So we could think of that 1.3 as a hundred hundredths is our one, and that three tenths, we can think of that as 30 hundredths. So we have 130 hundredths, if we wanted to think of it that way. Now, if we wanted to think about it in terms of the place value chart, uh, ones, tens, hundreds. So we've got hundredths right here. Hundredths, tenths, here's our decimal point, and here's our ones. And so if we wanted to, we could say, well, to model 1.3 would be 1, and in fact, I want to use bigger dots there. So that would be 1, and then 3 tenths would be 1, 2, 3. So we've just modeled 1.3. Point three, one and three tenths, and then what we could do is we could start this process of exchanging. So if we were to exchange this guy into tenths, we would get ten 
tenths. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we would end up with, now we have 13 tenths. Now, if we were going to exchange these into a hundredths, each of these tenths gets replaced or gets exchanged for 10 hundredths. So there's 13 of them. So that be, means we're going to get 13 times 10, which we're going to end up with 130 dots over here, 130 hundredths. So that's another way that we could be thinking about this. And lastly, we're kind of bringing it all home. We're all we're just bringing it all home to say, well, how are we taking that decimal, writing it as a mixed number, writing it as tenths, and then writing it as hundredths, right? And so one of the cool things is let's do 5.3. So we know that 5.3 is 5 and 3 tenths. And we can kind of use logic, but uh, we don't have to. But we could think of 5 as 50 tenths plus 3 tenths, so that's going to be 53 tenths, which is 53 tenths. Now, how can we get that to become hundredths? Well, one idea that we learned in an earlier lesson in this module is the idea that if you want, you can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 10, and you will get an equivalent value. So suddenly, you get the equivalent value of 530 over 100, because 53 times 10 is 530, 10 times 10 is 100, and so there is our hundredths. And if we wanted to, we could say, well, that's the same thing as 530 hundredths, and I ran out of room, hundredths, there you go. Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can, um, that's another way that you can make these connections between tenths and hundredths. If I want to do, we could do 68.5, so that's going to be 68 and 5 tenths, and 68 and 5 tenths. Uh, we know that 8 and 5 tenths would be 85 tenths. So because we have a 60 here, that's actually going to make 685 tenths. That's another way we could think about this. So that becomes 685 tenths. Crazy. But if you want hundredths, you're going to end up with 608, uh, 6 1,850 hundredths. That gets pretty, it's a big old huge number. And that wraps up kind of a really fun one. Teachers, parents, don't want worry about going too fast. You might need a little bit of time because when we're talking about equivalents, students need to be putting a lot of concepts together. Uh, especially when we're talking about fractions, we're talking about decimals, we're talking about place value, we're talking about, oh my gosh, bringing it all together. And that wraps up fourth grade, module six, lesson eight.